So this minus sign here, you can move to the other side. Okay? So this summation of the last term can be expressed as a summation of this term. All right. Now, the last thing I can claim is the first summation in here that I have, I can combine also with the second summation in here. I can combine also. And the reason is because the term inside the summation are identical, which is C tilde k times e raised to the power i k omega naught t. So we can combine the two summation side together. And by doing that, I will get, when I combine, when I combine the first summation side and the second sum summation side together, what I get will be this summation. And also notice, inside the summation, the expression is the same. As you can see, c tilde k e raised to the power i k omega naught t. And that term is also right here. Now, you may wonder uh, why these two summation can be combined together. Well, the reason is very obvious. For example, you can see if this, uh, this is a horizontal axis, represent, let's say, k. Let's say right here, k is equal to minus infinity. Let's say right here, k is equal to minus 1. Let's say right here, k equal to 0. Somewhere in here, let's say k equal to positive infinity. All right? Now, if that is the case, you can see the first summation, k go from 0 to infinity. Basically, it cover this segment right there. The second summation, which say k go from minus 1 to minus infinity, or minus infinity to minus 1, that will cover this thing over there. And therefore, when you combine the two summation side, it will go from minus infinity to plus infinity. That means you go from here to here. Well, when you look at this, you may ask me a question. You say, oh, wait a minute. What happened to something between minus 1 to 0? And the answer is, there's nothing between minus 1 to 0 because k has to be an integer. k has to be an integer. So between minus 1 to 0, there's nothing in between. So I already proved to you that the, the two summation on the first equation can be combined together as one summation with the index k go from minus infinity to plus infinity as indicated in equation 39. So in equation 39, basically we say instead of expressing the periodic function f of t using Fourier series coefficient involved with combination of cosine and sine function, as we have done before, which is a naught plus summation of a k cosine of k omega naught t plus summation of b k times sine of k omega naught t. Now we say we can express the same given periodic function f of t, but express that according to the complex form as indicated in equation 39. Now, remember, in this equation 39, the constant c tilde k, that is a complex number. So, just like in the old way, when we express using the sine and cosine Fourier coefficient, we have to figure out, you remember in the earlier lecture, what is the constant a0, what is the constant a sub k, and what is the constant b sub k. The same way, in equation 39, 
we have to figure out what is the value of the constant C tilde K. That is a complex number that you have to figure out. And actually, to find out the constant C tilde K, which is a complex number, it is not too difficult because all we have to do is just to go back to the definition of C tilde K, as you can see on the next slide. According to the earlier slides, we already define. So I just say recall. Recall. Few slides ago, we already defined to you C tilde K is defined as uh, A K minus I B K divide by 2. The definition of C tilde K we already defined at that time. So now, all we have to do is we just replace a sub k by, we just re replace the formula for a sub k by this formula. This is a sub k. And then we just if you remember, this constant, 2 over t times the integral of the function f times sine of k over k naught t together, that is exactly the definition of b sub k when we talk about Fourier series expressed in terms of sine cosine. So, the formula that you see over there in equation 40 is basically based on the earlier formula that we have, you know. So C tilde K, as you can remember, the definition was uh, A sub K minus I B sub K divided by 2, okay. Now, that factor, one-half, that factor, one-half, is exactly this term right here. That's factor one-half. And furthermore, A sub K, that term is right here. Minus I, that term is here. And Finally, B sub K, that term is exactly right here. So, equation 40, we can show to you very easily to be explained as I just talked to you right there. Now, the next thing we can do is we can look at equation 40 and we can say the function f of t we can factor it out because it appears in both integral. So the function LT is here. And because of that, all you have left is the integral of cosine K omega naught T minus I psi K T, as you can see from equation 40 up there. So this is where we are right now. C sub, s, the constant C tilde K that you have in the Fourier series expressed in expo exponential form is given by equation 40, which is the same thing as the last equation that you have here on your screen. The last step we can do, we can play around with we can play around with this formula a little bit more is by looking at the last equation on this slide we can express cosine of an angle and sine of an angle in terms of the e raised to the power i something based on the Euler identity so if you make use of the uh, Euler identity 
this last equation here can be expressed in a different form. This term in here actually is the same thing as cosine of k omega naught t. Okay? So this term right there actually is the same thing as cosine of k omega naught t. And that relationship we have already established before when we talk about the Euler identity. And similarly, the other term that we have, which is here, the red term, correspond to the previous slide is sine of k omega naught t. So this term right here correspond to the term that you have right here corresponding to sine of k omega naught t. All right? So that equation, the first equation that you have on this slide can be simplified a little bit further. And the reason is because that term right there, which is e raised to the power i k omega naught t, will be canceled with this term because of this minus sign. And by the way, don't forget that this i in here can be canceled with this i in the denominator there. And that's why the e raised to the power i k omega naught t, that term right there, will be canceled with this term through this minus sign. And the rest of the term you have will be e raised to the power negative chi k omega naught t. You can combine with this term in here. Okay? And don't forget, minus with another minus sign here become plus. So that's why what you have left is just this term is indicated in equation 41, the, the e raised to the power minus i k omega naught t. So, to summarize it, what we said to you in this particular lecture is that uh, any periodic function f of t can be expressed in terms of the unknown constant c tilde k time e raised to the power i k omega naught t where the complex constant c tilde k can be computed based on equation 41. Okay? So, and that concludes this lecture. Acknowledgement?